everyone, welcome back to Catchy Cartoons. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different as a change from all those animals we've been working on lately and learn how to draw this playful mermaid. So let's dive right in and get drawing. We'll start the rough drawing with a circle for her head. Then a line of action which will establish her pose as she is suspended in the water. A centre line and an eye line to plant her facial features. And we'll give her big eyes that we'll place on the eye line. As we would like her to be looking into the camera, we'll draw the screen right iris just off the inside of her eye. Without this tiny adjustment, her eye direction would be quite different and our drawing would not be as engaging for the viewer. High and open brows to give her a wide-eyed expression. A tiny nose and mouth for the cute factor. And some ears. We'll rough in a long, thin, triangular shape to create the upper body, followed by a finely shaped neck. And do take note of the very simple shapes we've used to create these elements. <laughs> you see, drawing really can be easy. We'll use an egg-like shape for her hip area, which will offset to give her a three-quarter bias. And remember that line of action we established at the beginning? We're now going to follow that line up from the bottom to her hips and back down to create the tail, which of course is the most distinctive part of a mermaid. And we'll rough in the two ends of the tail, which are known as the flukes. You know, like you would see on a whale's tail. And we'll give her very long and thick hair, <laughs> lots and lots of it, as this is another defining mermaid characteristic. For her arm, we'll draw a line down along her body. Continue that line into a simple mitten shape, quickly indicate some fingers, and then back up to the shoulder area. And then simply repeat for the other arm. But take note on how the width of the arms tapers down from the shoulders to the wrists. This creates an interesting shape and a sense of anatomy. <laughs> no parallel lines, please. <laughs> and since our mermaid is much more modest than many you may have seen depicted, we'll sketch in a line across her body and place a tasteful bikini top on that line. <laughs> Now that our rough drawing of simple shapes and forms is finished, we can start to bring this playful mermaid to life as we finesse the drawing and start to add some detail in the tie-down stage. We'll add a hint of the upper lids and lashes by making the line thicker at the top and extending that line out over the eyes. Her irises could be a bit bigger and let's thicken up those brows. We'll make her lips a bit fuller and round off the top of her head and just continue finessing the ears a little as well as the lower half of the head and her neck. Indicate some hair over the ears and why don't we just go ahead and make her hair even bigger as it's my understanding that mermaids simply love their big hair. <laughs> now, so that the body doesn't look like it's just simply plopped onto the tail, we'll start the hip area just above the rough drawing. This essentially makes her hips look thinner and more streamlined, making her look more, wait for it, hydrodynamic. <laughs> How's that for a word? We'll make the flukes bigger and we'll shave some bulk from her tail to make her feel like she's really stretching out as she moves up through the water, we'll thin her out through the waist. Now we want her arms to feel really straight, so let's emphasize the roundness of her shoulders as we want them to feel like they're being pulled down by the arms pushing against the water as she propels herself upwards. Sketch in a belly button and her collarbones, once again using very simple shapes. We'll adjust the shape of her bikini top a bit, <laughs> that is, make it a little bit bigger. <laughs> and now our playful mermaid is ready for the second tie-down stage. But let's take a little break here before we move on. How is your mermaid looking? Does she make sense? Or are there some things about her that you'd like to change? 
really use that critical eye of yours to make any adjustments necessary. And while we're stopped, perhaps you could just take a quick moment to hit the like and subscribe buttons too. Now I think our mermaid is looking pretty good, so for this second tie down stage, there won't be much adjusting of her shapes and forms. We just need to define the line by applying a committed dark line and add some finishing details. I'm really quite happy with the head and facial features, but we'll just make sure that the shape of her flukes and her tail is to our satisfaction. Now, you must never be afraid to draw through an element when you're roughing things out or tying down your drawing as we've been doing today, as it really does promote solid drawing and those lines can always be erased or painted over later. We'll solidify her arms and indicate the fingers. Define the shape of her hair. Add some tone to her eyes so they don't look quite so blank. We'll draw in some strands of hair now, as this will give the hair more body and suggest that it might be swirling in the water. And besides, they're a nice design element too. Her bikini top will be made of two clamshells, which, to be honest, sounds incredibly uncomfortable. A tad scratchy, I should think. But I suppose choices are limited under the sea. <laughs> Sketch in some simple shapes to suggest the scales on her tail and finally add some definition to the flukes as well. Now we can begin the clean-up stage where we'll apply our final line to the drawing. This playful mermaid's design is leaning towards a graphic style so we'll apply an appropriately graphic line. The exterior lines will be the thickest and the lines will get thinner as we move closer and closer to the interior elements. However, as we want the facial features to read clearly, they will need somewhat of a thicker line, even though they are technically interior elements. And do remember to taper your line from thick to thin, as we want that line to have life in it. So you may have noticed that my cleanup line is not black. As I talk about in my C is for chimpanzee video, a black line can often feel too harsh. So today I'm using a nice sea blue for the cleanup line as it's fitting for this aquatic creature. And here you can see how and where I use thick and thin lines while cleaning up. Note the bold exterior line and the finer, more delicate lines within the hair and the flukes, for example. Now that our cleanup line has been applied, it's time to add some colour. And this is where your personality can really shine, as this mermaid can look any way you want her to, or you can simply follow me. And I feel she should have a magical quality, so I'm going to give her shimmering golden hair. This will look especially good with her fabulous turquoise tail. A nice coral green for her top, ruby red lips, and to enhance that magical quality even more, we'll give her the most exquisite emerald green eyes. And that's that. How did you all do out there? I hope you had fun today and that you'll join me again very soon. Perhaps you'd like to try your hand at another mythical creature by checking out my vampire video. Thanks everyone. Bye for now.